Hello, this is Cody with Liquid Laboratory Studio. Today we're going to do the one year review on the DJI Mavic Pro drone. We got her here. Uh, so we've been flying this thing for a year and we're going to give you the good, the bad, the ugly. We're not sponsored or endorsed by DJI. We don't get free products from them. So we're going to tell you the truth. Um, nothing, nothing to hold back. Let me tell you some of the good features. Some of the good parts are that the app when it's working properly has a lot of cool functions. It'll tell you basically if the wind's too high, um, if your signal's dropping. So you can actually see two different signals. Um, you can see the one for the video feed for your um, heads up display, your HUD. Um, you can also see the signal for your controller. So uh, you can kind of get that going. Uh, the f kind of a catch we also ran to this drone is these antennas, they actually collapse in on themselves which is neat for storage at the same time it blocks the signal because they bounce off each other and it doesn't work. So you actually have to every time make sure you extend these. Um, and another neat thing about these antennas is you actually want them facing the drone. So whichever direction it is you want them to be parallel with the drone. So in the controller this drone is a little different. You can actually fly it without the app. Um, it's really neat thought so if you just have it with you you want to get it up in the air and fly it. Uh, it becomes a little challenging because there's not a lot of video feedback you can't really tell what's going on. You can hit like record and take pictures with it but you may not actually know what you're taking pictures of so that would be more of kind of a sporty thing to do. So you turn it into sport mode and you can kind of go enjoy. It's a neat drone for playing around with. You can go up to 40 miles an hour uh, in sport mode and it handles you know surprisingly well it doesn't flip over like you would expect uh, something of this lightweight uh, I have noticed on long distances it can tend to drift or get picked up by small winds and kind of pushed off course so it's not as big and powerful as the other drones and these blades are pretty fragile um, having fragile blades means you even touch uh, a twig uh, or, or even a piece of grass could potentially break it if it's thick enough. Uh, and some of the other drones like the Phantom 3s and Phantom 4s have these very thick blades which are robust. That's one of the things I wish they had with this but I understand they have to be lightweight and they have to be collapsible. So there's kind of a give and take with uh, that part. So uh, first of all, yes it is a small drone. As you probably already know it compacts into a small little case little case right here. It compacts into a small little case. Um, it'll fold down on, on all sides. But we're not here to talk about how it folds. We're here to talk about the quality or lack thereof of the product. Um, if you're going to spend this amount of money on a drone, I want you to kind of know what you're getting to. It's a great, it's a neat concept. I mean a foldable drone that you could take with you with a semi-pro camera. Uh, a lot of like users and and people have been noticing that there is a huge exposure difference. Uh, you're not it's the codec is over compressing. Uh, it's because it's a smaller camera, smaller drone, and you're just really not getting that quality you would get from like a professional model like DJI Phantom 4 Pro, which we also have. Um, and there's like filters you could put on because there's other issues. There's exposure issues with the lenses. They're either not letting too much light in or or sometimes too much of the shutter speed. So you can actually put an ND filter on to make that happen. Okay, flight time. They claim it's 27 minutes. Uh, you're lucky to get about probably 22 minutes. Uh, you go any further than that, you risk it auto landing and crashing, which we've had done. <laughs> um, so there's another model, which it's basically the same body and everything, different motors. Um, so they increase efficiency, so it gets an extra two minutes of flight time. Uh, it's the platinum version. Um, to be honest, I wasn't too impressed with the Mavic. I was one of the first to get it, Generation 1 owner, and I really expected a lot more. Um, this is my first semi-pro drone. I immediately went out and bought a, the Phantom 4 Pro. Um, but with this guy, you can uh, pack it down into a backpack and take it with you, but it's actually very fragile. A lot of these parts just on their own just start cracking off and breaking. Um, so let's go for the fun. Let's talk about the fun. The fun is, if you like repairing things, you will have a lot of fun repairing things. 
Let's talk about the components here. The plastic it's made out of is actually so brittle you can break it with your fingernail. Um, mine took a small hit and there's actually a weak point here. It's the shock plate. And as you can tell, pieces of it, when I was working on it, trying to copy it, a piece fell off. And this tiny little part here is supposed to hold the whole gimbal and camera to some rubber bands. I think it's a horrible concept. Um, the engineers kind of really, really messed up on this one. So what happens, it takes a tiny hit. Um, in my instance, it did it on its own during an update, shot into a wall, fell a few feet, and snapped the camera. Well, the worst part was the, the dreaded gimbal overloaded air. That everyone gets it. It's a really nasty air. Uh, there's people that are getting it with the app or just faulty components. This ribbon cable that actually goes around the camera, um, mine severed, but people are having these just break from usage. So I also have the first video on how to repair the gimbal flat ribbon PCB cable. So we also have that available uh, right up here. And there's some aftermarket, uh, some of these, I highly recommend, or at least after a crash to replace it. And uh, let's go over these. So you have these blades. Um, something interesting about these blades is the circle ones are the ones that always break. So they should really sell just bags of the circle ones and you probably have plenty of the uh, non-circle ones laying around. So we get lots of little extra components. And the, another fun thing is the plastic it's made out of it, they say it's a composite, when I talk to GJI, you can scratch it with your fingernail. I get it's lightweight. At the same time, I mean, you probably don't want something that's just going to fall apart. It's been through a couple crashes. Um, one was during an update, it shot towards the wall. Some other minor ones were trying to use the active track feature and it slingshot around into trees. Even though I was in mostly an open field, it happened to find the only trees on the perimeter. So. So about this arm slash leg, um, when it breaks like this, you're going to have to repair it. Uh, it requires you to take the whole drone apart and to solder on these three wires, a, a new connection. Uh, we also have that repair video, and that's above here. Um, so click on that, learn a little more. Um, another thing is this particular drone it has two sets of vision position sensors. There's two up here, they're cameras, and there's two down here, along with sonar. So they're supposed to help it um, from, from crashing and, you know, when going forward it can. But I've had instances where obviously the side that's not protected, the sides, rear and upper, can actually get you into trouble. I had it um, auto land into a tree area and it basically had nowhere to go. So, yes, those are a neat, neat system. Same time, they're actually light sensitive. You probably shouldn't be flying your drone at dark. Uh, they tell you not to. And these are actual cameras, so cameras actually need light to be able to react and uh, adjust to, uh, to objects in 3D. So, to be honest, the Platinum wasn't too impressive, the Mavic Pro wasn't too impressive. Great concept, that's why I jumped on the bandwagon, it was one of the first to get it. Um, to be honest, maybe Gen 2 will be better, but there's a lot of quality concerns and I'm wondering if they're built into the product or if the engineers need to watch this video so they can get some good ideas on how to fix it. I've also uh, called them and gave them a few ideas and we've talked about the DJI GO 4 app and it's had some issues. Uh, in particular, uh, some of the first people to have these drones got, got sideswiped. Your question is, probably, should you buy it? Well, if you have discretionary income and you like the concepts of it, you know you know what you're getting to, a little joystick controller. If you, if you know what you're getting, up front and I also have some videos on how not to crash it because it crashed. So if you know what you're getting and you know what to expect then it's not a bad drone. It, it is a, a expensive drone. I, I just would expect more or hope for more. Maybe like I said model 2, maybe model even 3 is what I should have waited for. Um, so that's that's it. I mean it, it is neat. You can take it with you. You can travel. It's compact. It's got some neat features. It's got sonar and it, it auto lands it'll self land um, it has two two systems of gps glosses and gps uh two compasses so it's it's a good drone that'll actually return back to you and has 4k capability uh at the same time there's just a lot of concerns i mean if uh, you'll go through a lot of blades uh or just keep it away from anything but the the truth is like what's the point of a vision system if 
you can't go anywhere near anything because it's going to break. Um, these break with just about anything. One of the drawbacks is this is only a 2.4 gigahertz drone, which means it can get a lot of interference from people's Wi-Fi. Standard Wi-Fi, you know, sits around that range. Um, they also have other drones that the controller can actually go with a 5 gigahertz, 5.8 gigahertz range. Um, so that's another difference in these two. I've actually had a crash, a minor crash. I had to catch it. Um, a someone ran a Wi-Fi repeater on an antenna, and it basically overloaded every single signal and started sending it as send and desend codes and it overrode the shutoff codes. So the 2.4 gigahertz range is a flooded signal. Um, I would highly recommend a drone that does not only have the 2.4, you want the 5.8 just to get options in case there's uh, problems with the signal. This is our one year review. I hope this video helps you out in making a decision uh, whether to buy it or not or to compare it to other products. So please show us some love, like and subscribe. Thank you.